So we're doing an experiment. We're streaming HD video across the NetFPGA system. And so we have video server that's sending the HD stream to video client. And it can take one of two paths along the backbone network. So we're looking at the interface table and the route table. And each PC has four interfaces. So it has four MAC addresses. And each router port has four interfaces on the Gigabit Ethernet ports. And so we're looking at the routing table, and so the routing table has, for each of the subnets, about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 at the top, identifies what the next top address is. And then it also identifies which interface the packets will go out. So we can see, for example, that packets headed toward the .9 subnet are currently destined to go out the MAC3 interface. So we're about to break the network connection so that the shortest hop path is no longer available. It's now disconnected. We're going to watch as the routing table, the OSPF observes that the route, shortest route is no longer available. And so the next shortest path will jump over, as you just saw, so that the packets will be routed on the MAC0 interface. And we can see now that the video is once again running and it's operational with the traffic going across the other interface. Here we can see the NetFPGA as it's installed in the desktop machine. And so in the back, on the left hand side, are the gigabit ethernet ports. You can see the LEDs blinking as traffic is sent and received on different ports. So as the video is streaming, it's being played on this machine. It's being routed through the NetFPGA and coming out of the system. As the video is streaming, we can see how much traffic is going through the interfaces. And so looking at the GUI showing the statistics, we can see the plots of ports 2 and 3. And so on ports 2, on the left-hand graph, we can see a number of packets as they are coming, as they're being received. And on the right, we can see a number of packets being sent. So the large number of packets are being sent on port 2, and they're being received on port 3. So traffic is moving from port 3 out to port 2 as it's routing through the switch. So we can see that the video that's being sent is variable bitrate, is that as the data streams, different parts of the data compress more than others. And so as we look at the bandwidth, the bandwidth varies over time. So the router quick start under the details shows the configuration of the NetFPGA router. And so at the top are the receive queues. And so traffic comes in either from the CPU queue or from the Mac queue, goes to an input arbiter, goes to an output port lookup, goes to the output queues, and then gets queued for transmission on any of the eight transmission interfaces, which are the four Mac interfaces out to the physical links or the four CPU links going to the host. The statistics of the output queues are tracked from the control panel. And so here we can see for one of the queues that the total number of packets received, bytes received, packets sent are shown on the right and that limits can be adjusted for the maximum queue size, both the number of packets and the number of bytes, by adjusting the dials so that you can crank down the number of packets that can be buffered or crank down the number of bytes that can be stored in the buffer. And so experiments can be run, and you can determine what the effect is of the application with smaller buffers by adjusting the sizes in the output queue configuration settings. So from the console of this machine, we're going to do a ping that goes out the host into the NetFPGA router to another NetFPGA router to a host up to the operating system, ping response, and comes back across the NetFPGA router. So starting the ping, we see that we get ping delays that are about a tenth of a millisecond, so about a hundred microsecond delay. So we have a configuration that has three NetFPGA routers, one acting as a video server, one acting as a video client, and another router that provides an alternate path in case one of the links is broken. And so we're going to show a demonstration of these three NetFPGA routers working together to stream video from a server to the client, both through the shortest path, and then if that shortest path is broken, through the alternate path. So in this configuration, we start off with the video server, which is this machine, that's sending video to the video client. 
and the video client is displaying the video, which itself is a an FPGA workshop on the display. And we also have an alternate server, which is going to route traffic if the shortest link is broken. So to start with, we have the video server streaming video over the Ethernet, which is the red cable, to the video client, and it's displaying. And you can notice from the activity lights on that NetFPJ that it's receiving the data packets with the video and also sending ACK packets back to control the flow control. We'll notice that the third video server, the third router, NetFPJ router rather, um, is effectively idle. The only traffic that's coming in or out of the hello packets from OSPF. Okay, so Adam is now going to break the connection that takes the video from the shortest path. And we can see that of the three routers now, we're going to rely on the alternate path in order to route traffic through. And so whereas the LEDs had shown that the path was effectively idle, is that suddenly, as soon as it's realized that that shortest path is no longer available, that the OSPF software will redirect the next top route to go from the server on the left to the piece NetFPGA router on the right and then to the video client for display. And so as we look closely at that intermediate router, we now see that there's more activity, transmit and receive, of traffic going in and out of that machine. And now the video is now streaming to the video client, and that we're receiving again, streaming video on the display. So you can see that that's moving again. So now we're going to connect the video, the shortest path back together. And if we look at the GUI, we'll see that the GUI was suddenly changed from routing traffic on the zero with interface, Mac zero, over to the third interface, Mac 3. So the video now, the streaming video is resuming, and again we're playing the video. So looking at the traffic statistics, we can see as we did that experiment, the traffic that had been on port 2, or sorry, port 3, that when we had pulled the plug was transferred up to port 0, where it was sent and the axe came back, and then after the cable was reconnected and the shortest path was available, the traffic resumed on port 3.